Hey, everybody. My name is Jennifer. This is Metatrona speaking. And today I'm going to be talking to you about a couple different services that we have. Um, what I actually want to start off with is I would like to, I'm, I'm happy to be able to give away a service to a lucky uh, recipient in this YouTube community. So one of Susan and my clients um, who's going to remain anonymous, um, they were so kind as to donate money to allow for someone on YouTube to receive a free space clearing session. So they had purchased the space clearing session themselves and they were so happy with the results that they wanted someone else to be able to experience that as well. So for the space clearing, um, please, I mean, uh, I'll include a link to that service so you can read more about it in the description. It's um, a very in-depth space clearing. It's not just like, um, I'm not just looking for like demonic energies to try to clear out. This is something where I will evaluate the land beneath the home to see if there are any factors going on that could be contributing to issues in the home. Um, sometimes the history of the land itself has created issues. So if you've had um, traumatic events on that land, even before, like long before the house is built, if you've had any trauma on that land, the energy imprints into the land that could cause issues. Um, I look for portals and I close them demonic portals, galactic portals, um, and, you know, all the usual stuff, right? Cutting cords. I look for possessed objects. I look for um, mirrors that have been changed into portals. Um, I do other stuff, too. I can't think of it all right now. But <laughs> I basically do a really deep inspection on the home and on the land and make sure everything is closed, cleared, refilled with the proper energy. I do a clearing on all of the individuals in the home to make sure that they don't have uh, attachments or other things that need to come off of them as well. And it just it's just one of those services that honestly, every once in a while, you just want to have it done. Like, Today, I actually just did it for my own home. And I and I did it very manually this time. Like I literally walked around with sage, which I don't do very often. Um, but it's, it's just like cleaning your house. You're energetically cleaning your house. Every once in a while, you just want to have it done just to keep things balanced. Um, if you are interested in getting the free service, please indicate it in the comments, um, in the comments section of the YouTube video. Um, if there is something in particular that you are concerned about with your home and you want to indicate it in the comments, please feel free. Um, uh, yeah, because even if you don't get chosen for the session, if you're concerned about something, I might be able to take a peek. I might not, but I might be able to take a peek and see if, um, see what's going on there for you just to give you some more information. What people don't realize is that whenever um, someone who has psychic abilities is tapping into energy on the other side, it, um, it does take work. It does take effort. And so sometimes I'll kind of joke that I have like a spiritual battery and it only has so much life in it. So I have to like kind of conserve it for um, clients and channeling messages. Um, but if I have a little bit of leftover battery life, then I can go in and like answer other people's questions. But sometimes I just run out of, run out of my energy. And I'm sure that the longer I do this, I'm sure it'll get better. And I'll learn to lengthen my battery life because in my mind, in my mind, I'm probably doing something wrong because energy is infinite, right? And so if I feel like I'm running out of energy, I'm probably using too much of my own energy. I'm probably not 
there's probably something I'm not doing right because it feels like it's something that I should be able to do 16 hours a day, but I can probably do it like, I don't know, six hours a day and then I get tired. Okay. So what I wanted to talk to you guys today about is one of our brand new sessions. The session is called Releasing Soul Patterns. So I'm going to tell you what is included with this session. And then I did the session for myself, of course. And so I'm going to share that with you. So Releasing Soul Patterns. It's basically a really deep dive into your Akashic records. So we recommend that if you're interested in this service, that you actually do the Akashic Records service first, because Akashic Records is going to pull away some of those important blocks that is going to open you up and prepare you for this service, because this service goes a lot deeper. For the Akashic Records portion of this service, they're looking at past lifetimes that represent patterns of behavior that you continue to demonstrate in different lifetimes. Um, The lifetimes that they show me tend to be from other planets. Um, It could be from Earth. It could be like from Lemuria or Atlantis. So it tends to be the, um, I'm going to say the more interesting lifetimes. With the Akashic Records, I tend to see Earth lifetimes. I tend to see very human, relatable situations that have gone really, really wrong. Um, With the releasing soul patterns, it's looking at really large scale events that light workers have been a part of. Because we've that's the thing, the light workers, we always show up for the life changing events. We always show up for the war. We always show up for the decline of a civilization. We always, we always show up for any, whenever anything's changing, things are going up, things are going down. We show up. We want to be part of that. We want to try to help things go up when they need to go up. We try to stop things from descending when they are descending or when darkness is kind of getting an upper hand. Um, let me see. trying to see I'm like looking at the description right now to see what I wrote because I don't recall because everything's channeled all the all the stuff on our website is just channeled information so I don't remember it most of the time okay so if you think about it this way and, and you'll see with the examples that I give but some of the events that could be included are things like um abduction are things like I said, like wars, not just, it might be a war between, it might be a war on one planet where it's between two different groups the way we're used to, or it might be like a galactic war where we have different groups coming in from different spaces. Um, the soul patterns are these really different, deep rooted responses to these larger situations and so you'll you'll see like with my own past life times that they pulled up but um for example when you have galactic wars going on a lot of the light workers have this kind of like hero mentality where we kind of expect ourselves to fix the problem. And if we can't fix the problem, we take it very hard. And so there's a pattern of that in a lot of us. And the problem with these traumas is that it's not like we only had this one lifetime. It's not like, oh yeah, we just showed up for the Orion War, just like one lifetime in the Orion War, and that's it. No, you kept incarnating over and over again into the Orion War. 
and then you were at the Lyran Wars, and then you were at the, you know, when Venus was declining, and when this play, you know, you've been at all of them, and so you've had the same trauma repeat over and over again as you keep choosing the same behavior and keep reacting the same way, and so it makes the trauma much deeper. <laughs> you're kind of like it's like. It's like you're walking along a path and you keep wearing it down more and more and more, deeper, deeper, deeper. It makes it harder to choose something else. So the releasing soul pattern service, it's it's very much for light workers, which to be honest, I mean, that's that's the only people, those are the only clients we see are light workers. That's who um that's who is able to hear us right now are the light workers. Eventually, more people will wake up and it won't just be the light workers, but right now that's who's awake. Yeah, so these these traumas could include alien abduction, galactic wars, medical experimentation, witnessing or participating in destroying worlds or lands or others. Yeah. Lightworkers and starseeds have unique types of trauma because they have volunteered for intense and consequential lifetimes meant to impact on a global or even a galactic scale. Yeah, soul patterns are created when a soul repeatedly responds in an unhealthy way to the same type of trauma. Yeah, okay. So in the releasing soul pattern session, we will identify two of your detrimental soul patterns that are you're holding. Metatron will provide me with one lifetime, one past lifetime for each of those to represent. It's basically like for each soul pattern you have, let's pretend, let's say it's a hundred lifetimes for each of those that contributed to it. He's just going to pick one of those 100 lifetimes. All of them are going to get cleared, but he's just going to bring one forward for us to look at and talk about. And so once we transmute and heal that soul pattern, it's going to, much like the Akashic Records reading, release you from that cyclical behavior and allow you to start making a new pathway if you so choose. So for, for a lot of us, I mean, here's the thing. So like, let's say we're doing a galactic wars. Let's say that's what part of what I'm clearing for you. Well, you're not having a galactic war in this lifetime. So is it going to benefit you in that exact way in this lifetime? No. Will it benefit you in future incarnations? Yes. Will it benefit you if there are similar situations where you're treating it the same way? So, like, let's say you have a problem with <clears throat> sacrificing yourself, um, martyr, being a martyr, um, or you have a problem with, like, I want to be the hero. I want to fix everything. And if I can't, I'm upset. And so it doesn't have to be a galactic war that you're upset about. There might be people in your life who have problems. And you're like, I want to fix their problems. And I can't. And that really gets to me. So even though you're not having the galactic war scenario, it can still help you change your perspective for this lifetime in order to not keep repeating that pattern. Um, let me see. Yeah. Okay. That's everything I wanted to tell you about the session. I want to tell you about the two lifetimes that came up for me, just so you can kind of see what comes up. It's interesting. I keep having to clear my throat. So not sure what that's about, but clearly I'm clearing something by telling you guys about this. The other interesting thing about this session is that in like the Akashic Records session, the chakras that hold the trauma tend to be in the physical body. So it tends to be one of the seven main chakras along your like meridian here in your physical body with the 
uh, releasing soul patterns, the traumas tend to be outside the physical body, which is kind of fascinating. It tends to be in any of these higher chakras. So like your, uh, your soul star, your stellar gateway, your universal chakra, like all these things, or any of the ones below your feet, like the earth star chakra, the, uh, the dolphin matrix chakra, the whale matrix chakra, the dragon matrix, like all of these really ancient <laughs> energy chakras up and down tend to be the ones impacted, which are more tied with, man, So what he's saying is that, sorry, Metatron, what Metatron is saying is that the chakras inside your body relate more to the individual. The chakras outside your body are how you are connected to everything else. So like your earth star chakra is the chakra that connects you to your planet earth in this case um and like the the dolphin matrix one connects you to the dolphin matrix which is a higher realm the whale matrix which is a higher realm um the ones above you are associated with you on like a soul level and also like if you get into the universal chakra that's you on the level of being everything that's you on the god or creator level where you start tapping into that chakra and you I like I get crazy philosophical if I tap into that chakra so I try to stay away from it but <laughs> because I'm like whenever I tap into that chakra I'm like I am god <laughs> and that's like all I'm saying I am god I am everything and I just start saying things like that um and so in your physical body those chakras are kind of who you are right in this moment more so and these are tapping into the bigger, broader, wider you and and your community of star beings and gods and goddesses and all of that. Okay. All right. Let's do this. So this first one's pretty short, but I was super traumatized by it. Okay. Ready? We can do this together. Some of so here's the thing. When you listen to mine. If you find yourself having an emotional reaction, it's because it's probably yours too. It's if if this isn't the exact pattern you have, you've at least have trauma associated with the event that I'm going to describe. So hopefully this will release a little bit of something for anyone who's listening in. So the first lifetime they showed me was an abduction lifetime, which I knew I kn I've always known that I've had them because um, when I first started meditating, I was I saw a gray, a gray alien, um, like they're called the Grays. They're from um, Zeta Reticuli. Thank you. They're just, they're gray skinned. They got the big black eyes. I was absolutely terrified of them. And it wasn't until I had a different species. I had a blue skinned um, star being or extraterrestrial approach me during meditation with, with so much love. And it wasn't until then that I was like, okay, I don't have to be afraid. This is, this is not something I, where I have to be afraid. I was triggered into the fear because I was tapping into the abduction memories. So in this lifetime, I am a little girl. I'm dropped off in a wooded area at night. So I've already been abducted. Whatever's happened has happened. They, Metatron is very gentle. So he's not even showing me who took me or what happened. He's showing me after the fact. He's like, you got dropped back off in the woods. It's a wooded area at night. I'm still wearing my nightgown. So I'm like this little girl in this like white nightgown. They drop me off in the woods near my house. It is summertime. I see fireflies. 
I'm hurting in my stomach and, and like just my torso in general, just like my body is hurting. I can't think straight because of the pain and whatever they gave me to sedate me. I don't remember consciously what has happened. So in that lifetime, my sister finds me in the morning. So I guess my sister wakes up in the morning. She's like, we had the same bedroom, right? And she's like, why isn't she here? She goes looking for me outside and finds me a short distance from the house. I'm lying on the ground, still in pain. So she takes me back to the house. I lie in bed for nine days, still hurting. I recover slowly, but have problems with stomach pain, nausea, and vomiting for the rest of my life. Um, so what's interesting about that when they gave me that lifetime is that one, I was terrified of grays, but you know what? The Zeta Reticulis, they aren't even the ones that abducted me in that lifetime. Cause I asked Metatron and he was like, no, it was the Zika's. And I was like, what? Zika's are the ones that look like giant grasshoppers. Basically they look like eight foot tall grasshoppers. And I understood that for this lifetime, that's who it was because the first time I saw them, um, in a vision, I freaked out. I was like, Oh, like, don't want to, don't want to be near that one. Um, so again, it's the trauma. The other thing that's interesting is that, so I had the problems with like the stomach pain, the nausea and the vomiting that whole lifetime. In this lifetime, I am extremely resistant to throwing up. Like, I hate it. I hate it. And I have no idea why. Now I know. But my whole lifetime, I've always been, like, that's the last thing in the world I ever wanted to do was throw up. And so I would, like, resist it. I hated it. If I have something wrong with my stomach, I'm, like, the biggest baby. I'm, like, nope everything's got to stop. I can't do anything. I can't, you know, I have like, I have a broken arm and a headache. I'm like, that's fine. I can work. If I have some stomach pain. I'm like, if I'm nauseous, I'm like, nope, I can't do anything. Um, it's funny because when I was pregnant with my daughters, I had morning sickness for months and it was like torture because I was like, I want to throw up every day. This is horrible. <laughs> um, so let me tell you, let me tell you how this impacted me. Um, so the trauma was located in my soul star chakra, which is right up here. The soul pattern is fear of not being in control. So fear of not being in control because I just got abducted and things just got done to me against my will. And that's tying into the stomach issues, right? Because in this lifetime, I'm like, I don't want to throw up. I, I don't want to not be in control. I want to be the boss of me. And so it's like, I'm having this control issue that's tying back to this past lifetime. So I did the process to release and transmute the soul pattern. Releasing this will help me accept life as it comes. Because realistically, we don't control most everything about our lives. We control our, um, our behavior. We control our thoughts. Control how we feel. That's really it. Like, we can't control we're going to get abducted or um, we're going to have a stomach virus or, or anything else that can happen in life. So that's the one he brought up for me. The next lifetime he brought up for me was under the category of mission failures, which mission failures is, um, so this is like a light worker mission, something you're doing uh, normally in a group where you're trying to assist the greater good and it doesn't work out. And so this is a very common theme with lightworkers, because again, we show up for these events 
these difficult events that are happening on a galactic scale or global scale, and we try to make things better. And we don't always make things better. That's not always realistic. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So in this past lifetime, it's actually with my, so my business partner, Susan, this past lifetime is with her, which is not surprising because her and I tend to show up together in lifetimes. Um, I haven't told her about this lifetime. So surprise, Susan, this is your past lifetime. <laughs> But I also released the soul pattern. You're welcome. <laughs> so here, I'll tell you what the thing is. So in the past lifetime, I see Susan and I in clothing like we are in a war or a battle. We are both, we're both blonde um, with her in a male body and me in a female body. We are in the back. We are in the back of, oh, I typoed. We're in the back of an aircraft about to land somewhere we wear durable clothing that it almost looks like the army or something like they were kind of beige beige colored clothing um we have chosen holy forgot about this i'm having a moment we have chosen to go to venus to do some type of work venus is at war they have armies marching in massive formations in the desert. They have clothing that looks like ours. We are joining them as Pleiadians. So we're Pleiadians. We've gone to Venus to help Venus because Venus is at war. Venus is going to war against Vega. Vega is one of the Lyran planets. Vega is a group of advanced individuals who wear suits that look like stormtroopers from Star Wars. Like the one time I had a vision of them. Um, so they, they have like extraterrestrial looking bodies, but you can't tell because they're in these outfits that look almost exactly like a stormtrooper where it's like the white outfit with like the black mask. Um, and like, you know, they have a helmet and all of that. These suits serve many purposes, but a major benefit is that it connects them to their collective or, or each other in real time in order to share knowledge freely. So these beings are advanced and loving and, in, and wise. They're like, let's put these outfits on. It's going to connect us in a way that we can share information with each other in real time. So if I'm doing something and I make a mistake and I learn something, I'm going to share that learning with all of you right now so that you don't have to make the same mistake. So they're, they're working together as a community. There is no way that the vegans would like invade anybody. Not the vegans I saw. No way. Um, they are intelligent and value taking care of everyone in their society. So what I saw was that they were they were given implants. So the vegans received implants from the cyborgs in order to get them to behave like drones or like slaves. The vegans are being used as pawns to gain power for the dark energies in the universe. So this is like a lose-lose situation. It's just like any war, right? So we're, Susan and I are Pleiadians. We're joining the Venusians, the people from Venus, to fight the Vegans. The Vegans aren't even like, they aren't even dangerous, right? They're, they've got implants. They're working for the cyborgs who aren't even there. Um, so we're going to kill the people from Vega. The, Ve the people from Vega are going to kill the people from Venus and anyone else who's trying to help, like me and Susan. Um, and the real problem is the cyborgs. And the cyborgs aren't being impacted at all because they're 
on their spaceships or wherever they are, you know, commanding everyone else to get killed, but they're not getting hurt. They're just watching, right? This is how all wars are fought. Two leaders battle for power and the people are the sacrifice. It seems like a valiant cause to join others to protect themselves, but it just adds to the loss of life. It doesn't solve any problems. Venusians, or people from Venus, look similar to the Pleiadians with straight white hair and human-like features. We pull our hoods over our heads. They fit tightly against the scalp and cover the ears. This makes everyone look the same, but it is protection against the desert conditions here. The Pleiadians who have come have a method to try to disarm the implants in the Venusians. We have physical technology on our bodies that is supposed to disarm their energetic technology if we are in within close range to them. Each of us is energetically attacked during the war and that lower vibration we carry prevents us from maintaining the right frequency to complete our work. We fail this mission. We lose our lives in this battle. And this is the turning point where the cyborgs take over Venus and take all of her resources for themselves. This is why Venus is now a wasteland devoid of life. Many of us who died felt personal responsibility for this failed attempt, and it compounded with each new attempt to rescue or aid additional planets across many lifetimes. So I'm like being really hit by this right now because I channeled this I don't know a couple months ago it took a it took a long time to get the service up and ready cuz I really wasn't in a rush since then since I've done this process for myself um in in the Patreon group that Susan and I have we've been asked to do work for Venus to assist the planet with regenerating itself because it is a total wasteland, obviously. There's no life there. Um, and that's a result of what happened with the cyborgs. And I kept telling everyone in the Patreon group, I can tell this is karmic. I can tell this is karmic. And I, I know, I knew that we had been there for something, but I didn't remember the level of detail from this whatsoever. Um, so it's just interesting that we were there, Susan and I were there when we failed to assist the planet, and now we're going to be going back to try to fix the planet. So it is karmic. Okay, so the trauma from this failed mission, um, the trauma was located in the dolphin matrix chakra for both Susan and I. The soul pattern is wanting to be the savior or wanting to be the hero, wanting to fix everything for everyone. Releasing this soul pattern will help her and I to accept that we cannot fix every problem. And it's interesting because when when Susan and I started the business, I mean, even now, even now, we still want to fix every problem every time. Um, we're slowly learning that that's not feasible, that that's not realistic, that sometimes you can't fix everything you want to be able to fix. Um, so Susan, wherever you are, the trauma is released. So we're, we're going to make new soul patterns now on this one. Yeah. It's, it's funny because we have all these we have these soul patterns and like sometimes you think, oh, well, it's like it's you had good intentions, right? It's like, oh, you want to help everyone. That's a good intention. But that is a good intention. What the bad part of it is, is when you want to help others and then when you can't and you like. um, You let it impact you that you can't. Because you're not in control of that, right? You Like sometimes you, you have that ability. 
and other times you don't. We can help people uh, as long as there's not like a soul contract in place blocking us. Because if somebody's going through something difficult or somebody's going through whatever, um, it could be because there's a lesson that needs to be learned. So we obviously can't interfere there because that's not to the person's highest benefit. What's in their highest interest is always learning the lessons they came here to learn. If you wipe away all the difficulties in someone's life, it sounds good, right? It sounds good to us as humans, but as souls, what's the point? You just took away all the whole reason that they are here. So can't do that. Man. Okay. So these are the two lifetimes that I pulled up for myself and accidentally one for Susan. So she has that now. If you are interested in the releasing soul patterns um, session, if you are curious if that's something that would benefit you right now on your journey, um, you can reach out to us on our um, website. I'm going to put the link to this service um, on the description as well. So you can take a look at that and see if it resonates with you as well. Uh, check out our website, by the way, because Susan just went through and like reorganized everything. And I think we're both super proud of it because it's much more like organized now. Before it was kind of hard. We had so many services that it was kind of hard to know where to go. And now we have everything kind of divided up into, um, do you need energetic support? Do you need physical support, like with your physical body? Or do you want like an activation? And so we have it divided up. And so you can kind of go through and find what you are looking for, I think, much more easily now. So check it out. You have some time. Okay, if you're interested in the free space clearing session, let me know in the comments. Um, if you have any questions about either of the sessions, let me know in the comments. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.